What's up guys, Charles from Fujinx Dev. I'm pretty stoked, it's the new year and I got myself some new camera stuff and I'm gonna show you all three of these new gadgets that I bought today so that you will know what kind of videos to expect in my upcoming videos over the next couple of days. So starting off with the first item, I've never bought this item before, this will be a first. This is a camera monitor. So I picked this up pretty cheap. This is the Feel World F5. This is a five inch 4K monitor and I only picked it up for about 150 US dollars. And so far I tested it out for a while. I'll show you some samples later on and an unboxing as well what comes with this uh, kit. Uh, it's really, really so far been pretty pleasing, pretty much worth the 150 bucks, I must say. You can also get the seven inch version, which is strangely cheaper than this five inch version. So we're gonna check out what's in the box after this. And the second item, which I'm also pretty excited about, this is a new camera that I bought. Uh, this will be my eighth camera. This is the Nikon Z50. So this is Nikon's latest Z mount camera, or basically it's the latest camera, I believe, which was launched about a couple of months ago. This is a 20.9 megapixel APS-C camera but using their latest Z mount so in terms of mirrorless cameras which is using the Z mount uh, they have so far launched three cameras uh, the Nikon Z7 and the Nikon Z6 which was pretty much a big hit for Nikon uh, the Nikon Z6 I believe won the camera of the year last year and I did get my hands on the Nikon Z6 and I did play around with it, tested it out for a while, but I didn't really like a lot of things about the Nikon Z6. So I was pretty much wondering how in the world did that camera win camera of the year? So I couldn't wrap my head around it. I decided to go out and buy this Nikon Z50. This hopefully will prove me wrong and prove to me that I was probably using the, the Nikon Z6 in a uh, wrong manner of sorts. And last of all, basically what my channel is all about, gimbals. So after waiting for DJI and Shin to come up with some new gimbals in the last few months, they haven't yet. So I decided to look elsewhere and I got myself this gimbal this is a Fei tech gimbal my very first gimbal was a Fei tech g6 plus absolutely hated it it was really cheap but everything else about the Fei tech g6 plus was extremely bad after checking out their videos on the Fei tech website and this Fei tech ak 2000s is actually uh, their newest gimbal which was launched about a month ago and was showcased on ces 2020 which really caught my attention there. So uh, AK2000S uh, is about $100 cheaper than the Chain Weevil S and the DJI Ronin SC, but this gimbal is able to take DSLRs and mirrorless cameras of up to 2.2 kg. So pretty awesome. They do have quite a number of compatible cameras as well. We'll probably go through that in the next video. So when I do my comparison versus the Weevil S and the Ronin SC, uh, but yeah, very nice. I've been looking at the design and videos on how to use it and stuff. And one thing I noticed is that it's pretty much similar to the Shein Weeble S in terms of the design and the way you use it to film and all that. So pretty interesting. It has a touch screen as well. So really, really interesting uh, gimbal we have here. Touch screen gimbal, which looks similar like the Weeble S. I really do hope uh, it is as good as the Weeble S or better than the Weeble S because it is cheaper and yeah, it looks really, really nice as well. So we're gonna check out what's in the box. This is the standard kit. I think I bought it for about 340, 350 bucks. It's uh, around that price range. My second Fei Tech gimbal. And of course, you know what's gonna happen. I will be putting all eight of the cameras that I own and do a step-by-step -step tutorial on each camera on this Fei AK2000S. Like I said before, we're gonna do comparison videos between the DJI Ronin SC and the Chain Weevil S as well. So right now, let's check out what's in the box for all three of this camera stuff, these gadgets that I just bought. So let's get straight to the mounting. Okay, so here's what's in the box of the Feel World F5 4K camera monitor. So inside the box, firstly, you have the package list and some manuals. 
basically that's about it and then we have the camera monitor this is a five inch camera monitor very very nice uh, it is a bit plasticky but for 150 bucks you can expect much from the build quality there's a HDMI ports the DC in the DC out you have the USB upgrade you even have in a headphones jack this location here is to screw in this uh, handle so that you can actually mount it on your camera the hot shoe mount at the bottom and if you are using a shotgun mic you can actually place it over here as well on this location here and at the top of the camera monitor you do have the options button the menu and everything and at the back is where the battery goes the battery does not come in the box and then the last two things that come in the box would be the HDMI cable HDMI to like a multi USB or a mini USB micro USB or a multi USB head at the back and last of all would be the sunshade so this would be to cover the monitor in case you need to film outside and stuff and the other two things that don't come in the box firstly would be the battery this is the Yong No NPF970 so this is an external purchase as well as the battery charging plate also is an external purchase uh, one thing that is a real issue is finding a original uh, power adapter for this charging plate so that's a real hassle so we're gonna put the battery in and we're gonna set it up on the Sony a6500 so I'm gonna show you how to attach this this goes in really easy just put it here so screw it in like this and make sure that it's tight so that it doesn't move around so this is what it looks like then this hot shoe mount goes on the Sony a6500 or any camera and they're gonna put on the battery now massive massive battery the preferred battery to get I guess would be the LPE6 which is the Canon 5DX Mark IV or 5DX Mark III battery so that would be uh, more easy to find around the market as well as for the charger and the power adapter so this battery is really huge in the Yongnor I actually use this on my uh, LED lights so it's a really really tight fit so you might have a little bit of issues putting it in okay so I've managed to get the battery in and you can see from the side view how gigantic this uh, Yongno battery is it's too big the LPE6 I just ordered that and hopefully it's smaller than this giant battery so once you put in the battery if it's charged you will see a red light at the bottom left you can turn it on And there you have it. it looks pretty pretty good we're gonna plug it to the camera and see how it goes how's the quality and then we're gonna play around with some of the menu options and stuff okay so I got it on the Sony a6500 it is a bit heavy to the back so it does fall backwards we're gonna put it on a tripod and see how it goes hopefully it can stand without tilting backwards so we're gonna plug in the HDMI cable with this port over here okay sorry that actually goes into the HDMI in port not the HDMI out port so just to take note of that yep so we're testing it out you can see how clear it is is a 4k uh, camera monitor and it works really well look at that it's really clear So just testing out the quality it looks pre looks pretty sharp we have to test this uh, monitor out I guess uh, when we are outdoors just to get a better view of how good uh, the range is when you're facing the Sun or if the if the monitor is under the Sun so probably we can take it down but it looks really really sharp there's some menu settings as well you can change the picture mode if you find that this screen right here is too uh, saturated so I put it in dynamic mode and it does look a lot brighter but it is a little bit oversaturated at the time but you can uh, change the settings 
and stuff. So that's pretty neat. You can see that you can change to mild or if you want to change to user, then you can manually set the settings. I personally want to reduce the, not the contrast, I'm going to reduce the saturation. Then the other settings that we have can change a whole lot of other settings. So that's pretty neat. Very nice to navigate as well. Moving on, we're going to check out what's in the box right now in the Nikon Z50. Yeah, so here's basically what's in the box of the Nikon Z50. This is uh, basically the standard package which I got with the 16 to 50 uh, kit lens. There is another package as well if you need a 50 to 250 millimeters zoom lens. So that's uh, more expensive, definitely probably costing uh, three to four hundred dollars more than this set. But one thing good, they were having a sale from where I bought it and they did throw in a free micro SD card. And also they gave me like a, a storage case uh, for putting my lenses inside there. Dry cabinet as they call it for putting your cameras or your lenses in there. So that came free with that purchase and that would cost maybe about 50 to 60 bucks. So really awesome free gifts. What comes in the box? The manual of course. And I did take out the battery charger and it is a bigger battery than for example the Sony A6500 so you will be able to get slightly better life, uh, life battery life on this camera than the A6500 or the A6400 and stuff. This is a 1120 milliamp battery so comes with the kit itself and a separate battery charger. A lot of the cameras nowadays don't include the battery chargers which is an absolute pain. Uh, other stuff in the box is the kit lens. This is the uh, 16 to 50 millimeters uh, DX lens. This is a Z mount to take note. Uh, like I mentioned, this is the latest Z mount mirrorless camera from Nikon. And this is a 3.5 to 5.6 APS-C. So uh, it has OIS or what they call in Nikon terms is the VR vibration reduction. And it's a really, really nice lens. Nice and compact. Looks exactly similar to the A6500. That's why I keep referring, referencing uh, this camera to the A6500 because they are so alike, or the A6400 in that case. And this is the camera body over here. So you can take a look at that. It's really nice uh, quality. Also, like again, pretty much similar to the A6500. Uh, nice camera body, nice build quality very very light very compact and the weight of it is exactly the same as the a6500 uh, this will probably come in at about 453 grams the a6500 would be about 450 grams or so so this is the body nice uh, feel to it nice texture so you won't slip out of the hand one thing really interesting is that the a6500 is a tilt up uh, lcd screen this one the also has a tilt up LCD screen, but in order to get a selfie mode, you can flip it downwards. Uh, not so sure why they came up with this design. Um, if you are using a tripod, the tripod would definitely be blocking the LCD screen and stuff. So probably you would need to use that uh, LCD screen uh, vlogging style without any uh, tripod, and, tripod and stuff. So if you're using a gimbal or so, can't really see yourself on the screen because it'd be being blocked by the tripod or the gimbal so this is the body and the last thing in the box would be a usb cable this would be a usb type c so this camera does usb type c port it does have a microphone port hdmi port and it basically very very nice rubber it is probably weather seal as well for its price it's really worth it about a thousand bucks so usb type c so that's really nice and the z50 is uh, just to let you know it is compatible with the ronin sc as well as the weeble s in terms of whether or not it's compatible with the fei tech uh, ak 2000 s we'll check it out in the next video USB Type-C and last of all would be just the strap 
the Nikon Z strap in the box, but basically that's about it. Right now we're gonna take a look at the Fei Tech AK 2000S. So let's go. This will be my fourth gimbal, excluding the Fei Tech G6 Plus, which I threw away. Uh, six, uh, fourth camera gimbal to be exact. I got a few mobile gimbals as well. Yep, so this is the box. Inside comes an envelope as well. Let's see what's inside the envelope. Instructions manual, quick start guide, warranty card and stuff. So I'm going to take that out. Wow, look at that. Looks pretty awesome. You can see there's some wooden texture there, it's just some nice design. Tripod looks exactly the same as the Weeble S tripod. Nice texture as well, so that it won't slip out of the hand. Feels really, really nice, hard aluminum. The only difference is that the Weeble S uh, does have a locking mechanism, this one does not seem to have a locking mechanism but really, really good quality. Feels really great in the hand. Just get out the gimbal. The access are not locked. And one thing that I did notice uh, about this Fiji gimbal is that it does use the Arca Swiss uh, quick release plate. So that's really, really cool. I've heard a lot about it. I haven't really used it before, but definitely gonna try it out. So really nice premium quality. A nice finish of the wooden uh, texture here as well. Looks nice basically. I'm gonna throw on a tripod at the bottom. You can see the ports over here. UART1 and UART2. Not so sure what those are. And they can also lock all the axes, just like the Ronin SC and the Weeble S. And then we have some ports here as well for the cameras. Uh, USB port and as well as a USB type C port so locking mechanism trigger button focus wheel and that is that wonderful screen look at that looks absolutely cool that this is a touch screen so never seen one of those before buttons over here so holes for you to screw in additional accessories, but very, very nice. Wow. Looks, looks really good, guys. Premium quality, nice feel. It only weighs in at about 1.1 kg, uh, I believe. Probably 1.1, 1.2, which is also pretty similar to the Chain Weevil S and the DJI Ronin SC, which, all, which is also around 1.1, 1.2 kgs. So let's check out what else is there. Ah, very, very nice. This is the type of uh, camera riser that I really like, the ones that are movable so that you can balance more difficult camera or heavy bulky setups. And then we have, this is the lens support and also exactly the same as the Weevil S with the wheels. Oh, sorry, the Weevil <laughs> S doesn't have the wheels and the Ronin S also doesn't have the wheels. The one with the wheels is the DJ Ronin S. So this follows the DJI Ronin S instead of the Ronin SC. Uh, this is this is the additional uh, handle for if you want to hold it exactly like the Weeble S. This probably works like this. You just see the holes in the side here. I haven't really played around with it. Both sides have the hole. You can actually. This is a, an additional grip or a tripod basically. The Weeble S, the tripod, as you know, you can remove it from the bottom, put it at the back here. This one is an additional piece, so if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. So you can hold it like that and walk around. Just like the Weeble S, so really, really nice. And it's separate, so it's a really nice touch. You have the, uh, the Arca quick adjustment plate, as I mentioned. I haven't used one of these before, but I heard a lot of good things about it. Swiss quick adjustment plate, and let's see what's in this brown bag over here. There's an RSS cable, probably for Panasonic, so that's a nice touch. The 
head on the fade tech actually is a USB type C so that's really nice as well so we got a Panasonic we got an Allen key with some screws I believe it's for this to screw on to the fade tech the lens support screw is here really really tiny and feels I think it's really plasticky as well but it's a lot smaller than the other gimbals uh, screw for the lens support mini USB cable so this would probably be for your Canon cameras really really nice as well good inclusion USB type C to USB 2.0 uh, mini USB to micro USB for your Sony's and stuff oh, no, This is the, for the Sony cable type C to multi Sony's use multi this will probably be for your Panasonic uh, USB 2 to a micro USB So those are all the stuff in the box looks really promising. Oh, there's one more This is oh, this is for Panasonic it is funny head here my G9 has this funny head. You can also use the micro USB either way. So I think quite a few cameras do use the micro USB. So all comes included in this package. That's really, really great. Okay, so basically that was it. What's in the box for the Fei Tech AK2000S. And I must say this looks really, really great feels really really great and premium as well just like the Weibo S and the Ronin SC the previous time when I bought the G6 Plus that felt really terrible really plasticky and stuff but this is a huge huge improvement especially with this brown wood uh, finish over here that's just making it a lot you know better design than the, just the plain black all the time so you can lock the axis it has a focus wheel uh, if for those of you manual guys, they do come with the extended edition which comes with the focus motor So you can buy that that probably costs maybe 30 40 bucks more expensive. So yeah, looks promising mirrorless and DSLR so that's a pretty straight up competitor against the Weeble S Rather than the Ronin SC the Ronin SC was specifically designed for mirrorless cameras but they have done it in a way whereby they have so much support for each and every one of the cameras out there in the market that they covered nearly every single mirrorless camera available so kudos to dji for that tomorrow we're going to do some tests on the nikon z50 first coming up with a video probably by uh, in a couple of days the nikon z50 against the sony a6500 so stay tuned for a whole bunch of videos upcoming hit the subscribe button the like button and the notifications button and I'll see you next one guys peace